Okay, right, question four, vectors. Um, show that these lines meet and find the points of the point of intersection. So we're going to start by setting it up as being the two lines in the form that we're used to having them like that. And then we, we simply look at both sides and we compare the coefficients. So, you remember, we ask ourselves how many eyes have we got? Two. Yeah. So it's one plus two lambda and six plus mu. Yeah. <laughs> that completely killed the joke. Thanks. And the J components on both sides, we've got two plus lambda is eight plus four mu. And K components, three lambda is one minus five mu. And try and be really clear about going through this stage. What we want to do is to solve two of the equations and check it fits the third one. Um, so if we look at the first two equations, well, this one would imply that, what can we say? Uh, mu is two lambda minus five, is that right? And if we look at the second equation, this one implies that four mu is what I'm doing with this. Um, there we go. Lambda minus six. If we compare these two equations, sub mu into equation two, we get that four lots of mu is lambda minus six. We've eliminated mu. We've got 8 lambda minus 20 is lambda minus 6, so 7 lambda is 14, and lambda equals 2. Which gives us mu as being a value of 2 times 2 minus 5, which is negative 1. And, and that would be fine, except we need to check that that's consistent in the third equation. So we now need to go to the third equation as well. Let's put one of those values, let's sub uh, mu into equation 3, which I didn't label earlier. And that gives us 3 lambda is 1 minus 5 times minus 1. 3 lambda equals 6. So lambda equals 2, which is what we had before, which is consistent. Therefore, they intersect. Okay, and that that final stage of showing that all three equations are consistent is essential. Where did we then had to say find the coordinates of the point of intersection? So don't miss the second part of the question there. So we need to somehow go back to the equations and sum on the values in. Well, lambda was two, so the first equation. <coughs> That would be the point where R is 1, 2, 0, plus 2 lots of 2, 1, 3. Um, is that right? So we get that. So any, any format here is acceptable. We, really, we normally write coordinates, though, like that, don't we? So let's, let's kind of be consistent how we write things and write coordinates properly. Part 2, find the acute angle between these lines. The bit that matters here is the directions of the two lines, which are the bits that come after the parameter. So we're now going to deal with the directions, and we've got to say that, well, you remember, we have cos theta is a dot b of the product of their two magnitudes. So that's what we're working with. So with the two vectors that we've got, that is 2, 1, 3, dotted with, what was it all? 1, 4, minus 5, divided by the square root of 2 squared plus 1 squared plus 3 squared times the square root of 1 squared plus 4 squared plus 
times negative 5 squared. Top line, 2 times 1 plus 1 times 4 gives us um, something. 6. Good. Take away 3 times 5, uh, minus 15 there. So we've got minus 9, haven't we? And the bottom line, I can't remember what that was. Some nasty um, powers of 7 going in there, weren't there? Root 14, root 42. Don't worry about tidying that up or simplifying it. All we need to do is to do inverse cosine of that. And um, the calculator says, uh, my calculator actually said 111.787 degrees. That's not the right answer though, is it? Find the acute angle between these lines. If the calculator gives us an obtuse angle, we need to take it away from 180 to get the angle we want. So 68.2 degrees, 68.2, three significant figures. And there we are. Um, and that's maths.